Stream at Fukushima Unit Number Three. Gunderson says plutonium could be causing fissions, heating up melted fuel. This is an audio. It was published January 10, 2014, at 8:45 a.m. Eastern Time by E and E News. U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission spokesman David McIntyre on steam coming from Fukushima Daiichi Unit Number Three, January 9, 2014. This also happened last year at this time and periodically since the tsunami in 2011. We are in touch with the Japanese regulator and TEPCO and from what we've seen and heard there is no reason to suspect that this steam is an indicator of anything bad happening. Scientific American January 9, 2014 The radioactive detritus at Fukushima is still throwing off roughly 1 million watts worth of heat according to Fairwinds Energy a nuclear safety advocacy group based in Burlington, Vermont. That heat turns water into steam and when the air is cold enough as it is in winter in Japan, that steam is visible. Nor is this plume of steam sometimes visible, sometimes not, only apparent in winter. When the atmospheric conditions are right with relatively low temperature and high humidity, the steam is visible even in summer as happened in July 2013. It is fortunate that physics suggests such steam is nothing to worry about because it is impossible to check firsthand. Due to the meltdown in that reactor, radiation levels are too high for any human to enter without receiving an unacceptable dose. Nuclear expert Arne Gunderson of Fairwinds Energy Education was asked about the steam coming from Unit 3 during a January 6, 2014 interview on Coast to Coast AM. At 122.45 in, fission products continue to be hot for five, six, seven years, so the plant is going to continuously steam even then. I have another theory. There's a large blob of nuclear material underneath the nuclear reactor, and this is from the meltdown. When all the uranium gets close together, especially in Unit 3, the plutonium emits what's called spontaneous neutrons. Neutrons you need to perpetrate a chain reaction, so the spontaneous emission of these delayed but spontaneous neutrons can cause other fissions inside this blob of material there. It's sometimes called subcritical multiplication. The net effect is scientists aren't looking at all the heat sources. You've got this radioactive rubble and that's the focus, but it's possible that we can also be having some additional fissions that are occurring in that blob that are keeping the remnants of the core hotter than scientists would believe that is occurring. And you can listen to the full broadcast for subscribers to download right here. For now, it's also available on YouTube right here, if you wish. And let's go to the next report. Just a moment. Host says Fukushima may be one of the biggest events to ever affect us in modern times. Gunderson said it should be level 8 on INES scale. And this is an audio. It was published January 10, 2014 at 2.29 p.m. Eastern Time by e, &E News. Nuclear Issues and Fukushima Coast to Coast AM, number one program and time slot with audience of 3 million, January 6, 2014. At 39N, George Nuri, the host, probably one of the biggest stories that's ever affected us personally in modern times. That's the Fukushima disaster. How is it affecting us? What's really going on? At 133N, Nuclear expert Arnie Gunderson of Fairwinds Energy Education said, so we've got groundwater in direct contact with this hot radioactive fuel, then seeping out and going back into the Earth's crust and into all the other buildings on the site. So that makes Fukushima Daiichi an incredibly more difficult problem to clean up than even Chernobyl. Nuri says, would you say that this is as bad as Chernobyl? Gunderson says, oh sure it is. Chernobyl was a single reactor meltdown and here we've got three reactor meltdowns. Scott Port's line, the previous guest, has said for a long time and I agree with him that really this should have been at level 8. The scale stops at 7. 
We almost had 14 nuclear meltdowns, not three. And you can listen to the full broadcast available to Coast to Coast AM subscribers right there. And let's go to the next report, just a moment. Radiation jumps around Fukushima plant. Now 1,000% previous levels. TEPCO kept strontium-90 data secret for months. Officials knew of increase, but too busy to do anything. Government holds Friday meeting about what can be done. And this was published January 10, 2014 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time by E&E News, 5.09 p.m. Asahi Shimbun, January 10, 2014, with emphasis added. TEPCO withheld 140 measurements of radioactive strontium levels taken in groundwater in the port of the Fukushima No. 1 nuclear plant between June and November of last year. Strontium levels exceeded the all-beta readings in some instances, leading the utility to decide they were wrong and to withhold them from public releases, TEPCO officials said. January 8. Previously, TEPCO officials said they had not released the data because the numbers were not confirmed. Company officials on January 8 insisted the utility had no intention to conceal information. NHK, January 10, 2014, emphasis added, Nuclear regulators will discuss measures to prevent the increase of radiation levels around the crippled Fukushima Daiichi plant. The level of radiation at the plant's border rose to more than 8 millisieverts in annualized figures in December, from less than 1 millisievert in March in the same year. The regulators say that's due to the increasing number of storage tanks for radioactive water at the plant. They explain that the water basically emits beta rays, which are too weak to penetrate the steel tanks. But they say when beta rays hit metals, stronger X-rays come out of the tanks. On Friday, the regulators are holding a meeting of experts to discuss measures against the increase. The officials say they have been aware of the problem for a certain period of time, but could not deal with it as they were occupied with the issue of contaminated water. Asahi Shimbun, January 10, 2014, with emphasis added, Radiation levels around the boundary of the crippled Fukushima No. 1 nuclear plant have risen to eight times the government standard of one millisievert per year. TEPCO said. The Nuclear Regulation Authority is scheduled to hold a meeting January 10 to discuss countermeasures. Beta rays released from radioactive strontium and other substances in the water reacted with iron and other elements in the storage tank containers to generate the X-rays, the official said. With a succession of high radiation levels reported on the plant premises and elsewhere, the NRA set up radiation monitoring devices at an additional 400 locations. And you can also see this report if you wish. And that's going to do it for your Fukushima radiation report. Thanks for watching and please stay safe. Pink out.